Hey, welcome to Matt's Garage where we're gonna help you keep you from turning your Hey, 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 welcome to Matt's Garage where we're gonna help keep you from turning your dream Bronco into my nightmare Bronco. Bro. Bronco, bro. Last time I published the day I put the video out, I think that was like two weeks ago, and I have not touched the Bronco since. And it looks like nothing got done. I don't know. I'm going to have to crack some heads here. I don't know who's been supervising this business. But, uh, yeah. I'm trying to finish up the firewall today. Maybe the cowl area. I don't know. The family's been gracious enough to give me all day in the garage today. Till like 2. Which is good enough for a married father. And uh, we'll try to... Uh, get something done here. It's time to rock the leathers. I weld upside down, I'm back. That's my favorite, man. That's my favorite. For those who are a bit younger in my audience, you know, this, this you may have heard referred to as a do-rag. And uh, when I was growing up in high school, there was a lot of controversy over whether you could wear a do-rag under your helmet and whether that was respectful or not. This was a Cal Southern California. And I'm not that old, man. Can you believe that? Well, times they are changing. A quick note about safety before I get down there. You see over here, there's a pile, and that pile is all my metal shavings. But it also happens to include a bunch of pine needles and other things that are quite combustible. So before I start welding, I'm going to sweep these out of the way because if I start a fire, it's going to be a slow reaction time to get the fire extinguisher. Stick your tongue out just right. Keep the head rested here because this gets pre fatiguing. Another thing I'm realizing I should be tech screwing these together. Okay, uh, now that I've done that, I'm gonna go and start doing the rest of my firewall. I mean, it's all tacked in, I'm just gonna start burning it in for real. All right, so I, I've welded in most of uh, this this seam, I actually welded all this seam here and up here. Um, now I'm going to make a cover for this. Uh, again, the reason I had to cut that out was that was like where all the angles were coming together, and uh, it just what it just wasn't happening. So I'm going to grab some cardboard and make a template. Very complex shape.
to match the contours I have to jog a little here and bang in a little there so I'm just putting it against the truck. Sometimes you trim the piece, sometimes you trim the truck. That sort of banged into shape, so now I'm just gonna sandblast it. You got the vacuum. I've got this upgraded with the Tacoma Company kit. And what that does is, this is the Harbor Freight uh, sandblaster. It basically adds a foot pedal down here and a regulator right there. And then um, I added the light and then I ordered this like knife, knife uh, thing. This regulates how much vacuum is created basically. And then the vacuum is back here, and then the lights are nice. It helps dry out the stuff. And then down here I've got a uh, dust deputy. It's basically just a vortex that, uh, the, it separates the, the sanding media so it doesn't get in your vacuum. Well, then, uh, just get one of these cheap uh, things, I forget, they're like router controls. You can sort of throttle your, uh, it's a variable control. You can throttle how much vacuum. I don't care what kind of media you're using, you, you do not want to breathe this stuff. So, uh, protect yourself, guys. Okay? It's, it's not worth it. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of questions about this Tacoma Company kit. Go to Alvarez Metalworks, I think the channel is. He has a whole series of doing the assembly and doing the kit. It also comes with a new gun and, and all that stuff, different hoses. Uh, and then you modify your Harbor Freight grid to sit lower in the basin. And then, you know, I like put caulking on all the edges and taped everything up, so. It basically takes your Harbor Freight blast cabinet, which some people say is okay, but it makes it just a lot more, I don't want to say commercial, but like, it just makes it better. Let's put it that way. And then if you want to order it from the Tacoma company, like forget the website, just call the number. The guy's pretty old school, nice guy. He can talk you through anything and answer any questions. It's pricey, but I have used it a lot on this build. Worth it if you're doing a restoration. If you're just tooling around, probably not. This is, uh, I think it's 16 gauge stuff. So it's about the maximum hole punch can get through. Get it in there. What you wanna do is you make sure that it's clearing the, um, you can see them popping out this hole as I, as I do it. You wanna make sure it's clearing because if it gets jammed up, what happens is the arm Yeah, it'll just mushroom up in there. So you want to make sure you're clearing that chad. It's pretty useful, man. So that's it. So it's like a prepped panel ready to get welded in. I was welding like a three. I'm thinking, I'm thinking four is where the sweet spot is because like with the slower wire, wire speed, just a little more heat. Depending on, obviously if you're doing super thin stuff, the four will blow through like in an instant. But that's pretty thick and my, uh, the other metal is pretty thick. Let me show you what that looks like from the inside. Is that panel there? You get the idea, right? You don't need to watch me do all of it. So, uh, basically I'm gonna clean up this side, pull all the tech screws out, 
weld all of the remaining seams there and then I think I'm going to leave the cowl for another episode because it's going to take me a little while to get all this done. I mean, my assistant isn't showing up to work anymore. My manager's useless, so. It's all on me, man. It's all on me. See you next time on Matt's Garage.